But I far prefer it when people, complete strangers, come up to Rich in Munich and say, aren't you Susie Schuster's husband? That's the way it should be, right, Marshall Falk, who's calling in on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line, don't you think, Marshall? That's the way it always <laughs> is. <laughs> I mean, let's just call it like it is. I, I like top billing, correct? You know, listen, Rich understands. He gets it. He, he gets it. Nobody knows better than him. Or you, by the way, because my, my seat next to, next to me is lonely <laughs> here, Marshall. I don't like being here without you. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Uh, I like I, I let you down. This yeah. will not happen again. No, don't let it happen again. Let's talk about Derrick Henry because the question of the day is: Is he already a Hall of Famer? What do you believe, Marshall Falk? Um, I, if you if you just look at his body of work thus far, um, and what we what we we anticipate for it to continue in this in this realm. Obviously, as you get older, there's going to be a little drop off. But what we need now is just longevity. We need to see this sustained, uh, this greatness sustained just for periods of time. And, you know, we're, we're going to be able to usher him in. And then the question is, um, as we do it, is he a first ballot Hall of Famer or is he, you know, in the Hall of Fame? It's all of those things, you know, those rooms inside of rooms that we talk about when we get to these levels. Has he done enough already, though? Just with the two years, just with how he's played, is he already assured? Ah, man, it, 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 it's tough to say yes. Um, obviously, we've seen guys who have had the same, a, a similar type of impact on the league, and, and let's say their careers were cut short. I think if your career is cut short, if something happened to him and he could not continue this, um, it would be people would look at it like, okay, he would have been in compared to if he just fell off. There's two, Terrell Davis. We knew if Terrell Davis did not hurt his knee, what would have, what his career would have been. First ballot Hall of Famer. He was on his way. But because of what happened, now you look at his body of work and then you have to kind of forecast what it would have been compared to, let's just say if he didn't get hurt and he played those years and had a similar career, they probably wouldn't have let him in. Marshall Falk joining us here on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. Marshall, we saw a pretty dejected Aaron Rodgers last night talking about throwing a bunch of wobblers, saying his thumb is still not where it wants to be, but he's not blaming it. What are your reactions to watching Aaron Rodgers after the game last night? He's, he's human. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, we, we used to talk about, you know, if you were starting your starting a team, like what quarterback do you want? And, and it was like Aaron Rodgers. And obviously this was pre Patrick Mahomes, but, but um, I, I just, I've never seen him look so mortal or so human and all the cryptic interviews that he's been doing. It was for him to say, yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah. It was like, man, that's the kind of leadership I like that right there because when the guys were dropping balls or other things were happening, you know, he was really not pointing the finger, but just stating the facts because sometimes when we do interviews, we don't want to blame people or say what it really is. We know you're watching the game. We know you get it, but he was being very candid. And last night, a lot, a lot of what happened was, was on him. And, you know, I, I just I, I like where he is right now. I know a lot of people are pissed off and they don't like the way, you know, he, he, he's going about his business. But I, I think Aaron Rodgers is tired of having the best record in the league and then losing in the playoffs. He, he, he's looking at championships and saying, okay, I have one. Well, well, what's that? What's that? When you look at Brady and what he has, well, what's that? But what's he to do then, Marshall? Because I think that if he didn't have 59 million reasons to stay, would he walk away, do you believe, or do you believe that he has more in him? Does he want to, What do you think will be the answer there? Well, I, I, I'll say this. You know, he was talking about walking away, and Green Bay was talking about wanting him to walk away. Well, if, if Green Bay was waiting for a body of work to say, well, maybe, maybe we need to be playing Jordan Love, well, this, this could be it. If you really want to, this, this could be it. And here's what I know. This team is not equipped 
to be playing with the with, with Jordan Love at quarterback. I mean, we're watching Aaron Rodgers struggle with this team. This team isn't equipped, and, and they have to look at it. They they they're missing a couple of pieces. They're missing a couple of pieces. They got exposed last year in the playoffs. Um, and obviously, we know they had some offensive linemen that was hurt. They 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 kind of patched it together last season, and um, you know, Aaron felt like they didn't address their needs. And so he voiced that, and obviously uh, we know Devontae got out of there. But listen, man, if this divorce is going to happen, this is like Aaron Rodgers has given them reason to maybe is he is he on the is he on the down is he on the downhill? Where is he? Like this is this is it, Marshall. We got a pretty big game in Minnesota this weekend. Uh, when are we going to start taking the Vikings seriously? What's it going to take? Is it going to take another another big win over a tough, you know, conference team in, in Dallas? Like, what's it going to take for us to really look at the Vikings as contenders? I am so impressed with what Kirk Cousins is doing. I've always said that he was the reason – like, if they needed him to win, if they needed him on his arm, he couldn't win a game. As a team, when they played well, they could always win. But now I'm seeing Kirk Cousins be the reason why they win games. He, he, the, yeah, yeah, Justin Jefferson making great throws. I mean, making great catches, but it's the throw. Kirk Cousins wouldn't throw a lot of these balls that he's throwing. And, and, and just, just what he's doing, and it's just so ironic, you know. Um, Dak Prescott will be across the field watching Kirk Cousins, and he's watching his his future. He's like, well, what we used to think about Kirk Cousins is what we're now saying about Dak. I think his record against teams that are 500 or better is like 16 and 17. It's unbelievable. Like, you can't beat good teams. And what does that mean? That means you can't win in the playoffs. That, that, and that's the that's the problem the Cowboys that they that they've been having. So, man, it, it, this is like this is like one of those big games we get mid season that could possibly be the NFC, you know, championship. And and I can't wait to see how both of these quarterbacks respond. Dallas as a team, but Kirk Cousins coming off a game, and and now now he's getting praised. Man, this is this is awesome. This this is so good. I can't wait to watch these two these two teams go at it. Yeah, what what did I hear earlier in the week that Kirk Cousins is now being encouraged to throw it into super tight windows, like throw those contested balls just to see if Jefferson can make the play, right? Yeah, he was he's the conservative he's a conservative quarterback. His problem was he would only throw the ball to open guys. And when you get in the playoffs, guess what the problem is? Your guy won't be that wide open. You have to throw those, you throw those I trust you balls, those 50-50 balls, and watch your guy go get it. And he just he wouldn't make those throws, and now we're watching him make those throws. And it's like being an elite quarterback isn't just about the throw. It's about believing and having faith that the receiver is going to catch the ball and protect you as a quarterback. That's what this comes down to. And and let, let let me let me not do man Justin Jefferson. I mean, uh, Uno Uno came and stole the show last year. Jamar Chase <laughs> and Justin Jefferson. It's like I'm gonna take it right back because a year two years ago it was about me. And just imagine these two young men played opposite each other. Unbelievable. Unbelievable to watch what Justin Jefferson is doing. And it's not like when he came in, they just gave it to him. Like, he went took the one spot. He went there, I'm the number one in this offense. Adam Thielen, you're the number two. <clears throat> and it's impressive to watch what he's doing. Yeah, no it's wonder. Impressive. The no. numbers that he's putting up. Look at the numbers he's putting up. Yeah. Marshall, uh, Marshall Falk here on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone lines. Are you at all concerned about the mistakes that Josh Allen is making, Marshall? No. No, I think Josh has to make these mistakes 
to get him to the next level. Now, let's be critical. Let's stay on him because that's what we do all, do all quarterbacks. But that, oh, he hadn't thrown an interception in the red zone and missed many tries for a reason. He was probably being too conservative. So now he'll know, he'll know when the games are tight, when things are on the line, he'll understand what his limitations are and when he's taking chances, where to take the chances. I think this is, this is just a part of the maturation of a quarterback. It's like he's learning, like, okay, this thing is on me. I carry the load. I'm getting all the accolades. I need to make the plays. I need to be the reason we win or the reason we lose. And that's the quarterback position. You can't be, you can't be iffy. You can't be, uh, when you play that position, you're the reason the team went and you're the reason the team lose. That's why in the history of football, when you talk about players and you, and you talk about coaches, you talk about a head coach and a quarterback when you talk about wins and losses. You never hear, hey, Marshall Falk, oh, yeah, his win-loss record. Nope. Quarterbacks and head coaches for a reason. What other question marks might you have for this weekend's games, Marshall? Oh, man. Um, I, 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 don't, I, I really don't have any. I just, I just like, the, I, I like where the league is right now. I like the fact that all the teams are really starting to show. It's Kansas City. Um, uh, uh, Charger, L.A. Charger game, such a big game, such a big game. And 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 for Brandon Staley, you know, it's, like it, 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 is everybody when they're in trouble. Sean Payton is possibly the coach coming. I guess <laughs> is Sean Payton like the replacement for everybody right now. It seems when like the coach it. Seems to underperform. It's crazy how his name continues get, get, to get thrown around, but. But this team, Justin Herbert, anytime you put him and and and, and that Mahomes in the game, hey, I'm watching. I'm I'm, I'm I got it. I'm, they got my attention. And what a big game to watch them two, these two young quarterbacks. And just think about how long they're going to battle. How long they're going to battle? Can I can I give a little props to Seattle and what they're doing? Because I talk so much crap about Seattle because they're in the West, you know, with the Rams, and I just I don't give them a lot of credit. But, you know, it, it, it's just impressive. You lose to Russell Wilson. Geno shows up. And where Geno has this team in first place, that's impressive. And, and, and I, I wish I could give Russell Wilson a hug. He needs a hug. He really needs a hug. He don't need to ride. No, no ride, just, just a hug. <laughs> hey, to, hey, Rich. Uh, hey. Sorry. Hey, Marshall. Uh, Rich said two weeks ago that Tua uh, is an elite quarterback. What have you seen out of what's going down in Miami? You like what you see out of Tua so far? You know, I, I now can see the talent that he is. Um, there was just a lot of question marks around him. And he doesn't have to play tough. Or, Tua, we know you're fragile. He's elite. He, he, he's, a, he's elite. Like, what, what the kid is doing, you just, you just don't get to do that. Um, and if, if they have the talent around him and the protection for him, the running game to help him, and with his defense and what they've done, um, man, I, I am impressed at what the Miami Dolphins have done. And let, 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 let's not forget, you know, um, they, they came off a pretty rough offseason. Nobody was really focused on the football aspect of it because we had some, we, we, we had some, some social issues for what was going on with the Miami Dolphins, and and I, I like where where they are as a team. This head coach has proven that you know he can, he can lead men. Now I have to do this for Rich. Hey, you guys, the Jets have a chance of making the playoffs. The Jets. No, don't you love the Come fact on. that maybe it, his uh, maybe, maybe your reception crapped out just because you're saying the Jets have a chance. <laughs> the Jets. For Rich, for Rich Eisen, the Jets. This is awesome. Oh, and I'm going to say it. When, when the Jets and the Giants are good, football is so much better. It's been a long time, though, been, Marshall. Like, like I said, like I said, so much better. It's been a long time. Last question. At what the is same the time? Yes, sorry. Good, at the same time, 
Oh. I'm happy for Rich. My heart is full. Well, My heart is full for Rich. He, listen, he doesn't ask for a whole lot. You know that, right? He asked for, yeah. you know, just a, a Michigan win over Ohio State, the Jets to be competitive, and what would be the third thing? Me to leave him alone for, for an hour? He doesn't ask for a whole lot. Come on, Marshall. Give him the Jets, right? Uh, oh, last. Yeah. I, 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 I could not do this show and not talk about the Jets. I send him little text messages about his team like, hey, here's what it is. You know. in, in, in the sea, I, I just like I, I love I love Robert Sala. I could play for that man. Really? Why? What is it that oh, you yeah. love so when, much when, about him? When, when he got these players to believe, we, we we bought into that. If you went to the Jets, there was a curse, and he said the losses and the things that happened. You guys weren't even born. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Wilson was like, "Hey, Zach." You can't even be responsible for this. You weren't born when this thing, when this happened with the Jets. You're not responsible for all the losses. So let's not play into the narrative. And early in the season, he said, we will play good ball. And I know, just like, just, 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 along with me, you guys were like, yeah, right. We've heard this before. Well, he fit, he fit the New York mindset perfect coach both coaches both of them well from his team to yours what do you think is the way out for the rams from their current predicament marshall oh this is it this is this is this is listen here's it you pushed all the chips in last year you you, you won and this is what you get this is this is what happens the, the year after they, they just don't have the they don't have the talent and, and, and I'll, I'll be up front on the offense and defensive line, minus the one or two guys that they have that we know of, they're not good enough up front. Well, that's pretty Let's succinct. Just be real. Yep, that's, that's telling them like it. it is. They are not good enough. The defensive line, they're not good enough. The offensive line, they're not good enough. And when you're not good enough on those two, in those two areas, you, you struggle as a team. Don't even worry about coming off a Super Bowl season. You struggle as a team. I mean, teams come in, they can get, they can just get sacks. This offensive line might be one one of the one of the. And, and I'm sorry because they've been playing musical chairs. They've had so many guys hurt, but the the, the collection of talent. I mean, I, what, what they're on the third tackle. I mean, the left guard has had I don't know 19 concussions. I mean, it's, it's just it's, it's, they've had multiple centers. It's, it's just it's not good. You, you cannot do this up front. That's the one place you have to be healthy or your season is going to be challenging. Last question for you, Marshall. What's your favorite dish on Thanksgiving? Oh, man, my favorite dish. I'm a, I, I love, um, and I, I make them now since my mother's along the way a stuffed bell pepper with, 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 with ground meat and shrimp, a um, little cornbread uh, seasoning on top of it, cornbread dressing on top of it, not cornbread dressing, uh, cornbread crumbles on top of it. Oh, I can't wait. Okay, I can't Cannot wait to try wait. it. Next time you come up, I can't wait for you to bring me some of that to try. I got you. All right, I got I'm you, not, you always do. You always do. Marshall Falk, thanks so much for calling in. Thanks for allowing me to ride in the sidecar, Sue. Honey, <laughs> I, I need the chairs always open for you. You're like you're like my Elijah, so it. to speak. <laughs> See you, Marshall. Bye, Marshall. Thanks a lot. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.